don't put the the cart before the horse. Like don't go out there and try to do 20 deals in a month and you don't even know how to do a transaction. Learn, learn first and then go out there and, and start doing the volume and stuff. That's That's the biggest thing is be educated. All right, welcome to another episode of Real Estate vs. Tech. I'm your host, Norman Kinsey. Today we have a new special guest. Welcome today to Real Estate vs. Tech. Thanks for co-hosting today. Hey, of course. So happy to be here this week. Yeah, of course. It's always nice to change it up and do things to keep our viewers and listeners on their toes. And today we have a very special guest, someone all the way from Tucson, Arizona. We have Candy on the show. Welcome to Real Estate vs. Technology. Hi, thank you. So thank I had you. Having- having- I have your Instagram behind us. You're absolutely crushing it over in Tucson. Tar reward winning realtor, reward winning team, top producer. We want to get into your business. Real Estate First Tech's all about your business and kind of what you're doing right now, technology you're using. Um, I actually saw some things you're doing over on uh, TikTok. I was like, wow, she's she's leading by example over there and crushing it. So, so kudos to you and all that you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, of course, of course. So let's go ahead and get into it. So starting off with some questions to start off the show. So tell us like, how long have you been in the business and what made you get into the real estate sector? What made you get into this business out of all business? Okay. So I've been in real estate for about four and a half years now. Um, what got me to get into it was I was a park ranger at um, Arizona State Parks. I was a law enforcement park ranger and I got pregnant with my son through in vitro. We had a little trouble getting pregnant, but um, after I felt my baby move inside of me, I decided I didn't want to wear a gun to work anymore. And I was 36 years old when I was pregnant. And so I did the stay at home mom thing for like six months. And it just was like, it wasn't me at all. So uh, I asked a friend of mine, actually our realtor, if she had any, you know, stay at home work. And so she got me hooked up with the transaction coordinator company. And I started doing that. And then once I started doing that, I started seeing like, how many mistakes they were making and um, the commission checks coming in and all the cool stuff that they got to do. So I decided to, to, on the weekends, go to real estate school and um, then became a full-time realtor uh, right after that, about three months after I was a transaction coordinator. So my, my first year went pretty good. You know, I sold 50 houses my first year by myself. Congratulations. Congratulations. You You know, it's interesting because we've had quite a few guests come on the show and they get into the business, whether it's like they went through a transaction, it was horrible or like what you just said. And you're like, what? Like if they could do this, I could do this. Let me lead by example here. So, so give us, I'm going to go a little off script here before I get into the next couple of questions that we have before I give it to Janae for the mix up round, give us some context. Like how did you hit the ground running doing 50 transactions in your first 12 months? Yeah, it's just been a, it's been crazy. It's like a big old huge wave that I've just been writing for the last four and a half years. But so um, when I started, I started watching like podcasts and I watched this one person who did 30 open houses in 30 days and they were able to get like five under contract. So I was like, well, I got nothing going on right now. I'm working as a showing assistant for another agent to kind of make enough money to have my kid in daycare, you know? So I did that. And then I did um, sometimes two open houses a day. I did at least six a week. And um, by February, I started November 16th. And by February, I closed my first deal. Um, The next month I closed two, the next month, three, then four, five, six. And um, it just you know, just building the base and knowing that it was hard work and it wasn't money right up front. When I started, I said, if I sell one house in six months, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with this thing. Right. Okay. okay. So um, I gave myself a long term, but it just started going really fast. Uh, My relatability, my background, um, I'm a Navy veteran. I was a police officer. I worked in uh, SEO for uh, my own website company. And then I did the transaction coordinator work. So when I got in front of clients and being a a showing assistant for a really, um, you know, top producer got me in front of clients that I would have never been in front of. And so I had her like at the other end of a phone, just building my toolbox, like really quickly. So within about three months, I wasn't, I was so busy myself that I wasn't able to do showing assistant stuff anymore. 
and um, I got involved with the association. I, I started um, YPN, uh, Young Professionals Network, the first year, um, and uh, started. I read about Rookie of the Year when somebody said, you know, after six months, I had closed twenty deals, and they were like, "Wow, you're probably going to be Rookie of the Year." And I'm like, "What's that?" You know, I'm all about competition. So um, I got involved with the Women's Council of Realtors, uh, the Veterans Council of Realtors, the uh, NARAP, like all of the different places because I'm in kind of a small town outside of Tucson, and we're kind of an island over here. So I wanted to, to get in, in touch with all the Tucson agents. And so by doing all those things, my second year, um, not even a second year, and I was on the board of directors for the Tucson Association of Realtors, because I just kind of got really involved with the ex expertise portion of it. I wanted, I didn't want anybody to know that I was new. I just wanted them to look at me as an expert. So I got five designations my first year um, from the National Association of Realtors and one rookie of the year my first year. And I really think it's like my relatability and my um, genuineness and my hard work. Cause I, I like, I literally my first listing, the, the, the yard needed gravel cause we don't have grass here. So it needed gravel. And I was out there shoveling gravel into the front yard to get it ready to go because the lady was a little bit older and couldn't do it herself and you know I was in the navy I wasn't making any kind of money so when I'm like well at the end of this deal I can make pretty good money so I'm going to put the work in and that just kind of spread to referrals and uh, my first year I didn't I didn't buy any advertising until I was probably nine months in when when people started talking about like oh internet leads this and that um but my m majority of my um my deals that I get are from referrals and even more. I mean, I know you talked about TikTok before the show just a little bit, but, um, you know, spreading my name around the country instead of just around my local area, people, lenders, realtors from all over the place just uh, mm -hmm. say, Hey, I need a realtor in Tucson, Green Valley. Can you help them? I'm like, yeah, of course I can. So just thinking outside of the box. Um, I also got a moving truck my second year in, I bought a moving truck and wrapped it in my, uh, my um, branding. And it says, you know, mm -hmm buy or sell with me, use this truck for free. And so I use that for, um, buyers can use it to move and I use it for getting listings ready. Some of the local charities use it to move stuff around. I've even got a guy that goes around and um, picks up trash or donations from the elderly and he takes that to away. So my big billboard's just driving around. And I think all of that combined and the, the hard work that I do is, is how I just got going. And then every time I got too busy for me, I added a person, I added a person so that I could like build the team and keep giving the service that I like to give to my clients. Wow. So to, man, it's a lot to unpack. I, first off, thank you for your service. That's awesome. Thank uh, you. I mean, appreciate what you've done for this country and how you served. And then, I mean, for all the viewers and listeners out there to take note, like, go for it. Like, just go for it. You know, in mind over matter, you literally just dove into the deep end and I'm like, look at my pool outside, dove into the deep end and just like went for it. And so kudos for you for doing all that. And the moving truck idea is super smart. I know a lot of agents that do that, which is awesome. And yeah. for some relatability, I've also served on all those boards as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I've helped out with numerous, what well, back in the Bay Area in California with Women's Association, I sat on boards, I helped them out, I did flyers and all that, just the liftoff can get out there. And now we're doing this to give back, but uh, I can relate to you on a lot of stuff that you just were talking about as far as with the actual local association and whatnot. And mm -hmm. we need more individuals like yourself who are hungry, that are young, that are leading by example, that are out there doing what you're doing because the average age real estate professional is 57 and they do not go and do what you do. Or, you know, I think, would you say it, it's a mental thing for you? Like just mind over matter, do you vision like I'm doing 50 transactions or did it kind of just happen? Like, like, how did that work out for you? Well, it started off with no expectations. And then once I started to see that, um, you know, I, I do open houses and you do those to like get buyers, right? You think, yeah. however, they're secret shoppers. They're secret shoppers. There's neighbors that are over there and they want to see how much energy you have and how much you're doing for the house that you're listing. And I've had people walk into a, a, a open house and say, hey, I'm thinking about listing my house. When you're done here, would you come to my house and tell me what the value is? And I'm like, what? Yeah, definitely. And so I've picked up tons of listings just by doing open houses and, um, you know, just seeing where the needs are and filling those needs in to where, you know, an agent, sometimes I hear people complain that, that realtors don't do enough work. And I'm like, well, I do all the work. I like come in and I'm saying, okay, we need to stage this. I'm going to get my guys over here. We're going to do all this work. Cause if you leave it to the client, they don't have the eye that we have. 
you know, they haven't been in a hundred houses or a thousand houses with a hundred buyers mm-hmm. showing, showing them off, seeing what they like, what they don't like. So to, to save time and energy and to make it just how you want it to be, I just get in there with my clients and start, you know, moving furniture. This needs to get out. This room looks crowded. This wall needs to get painted, you know, break out the paint sprayer and <laughs> get going. So I think that the energy and, and the willingness to work is like one of the best things. You know, I also volunteer. So people see you and they like you. That's why social media is so big is you're not just saying, Hey, just listed, just sold. I'm like, here's me with my kids. Here's me a Habitat for Humanity, like building a house. Here's me doing, you know, a, a local fundraiser for a, you know, somebody whose mom is sick or something like that. Like they, people want to get to know who they're working with these days. It's not just about the stuffy, you know, suit and tie. And I'm mm-hmm. a professional. It's they, they want to know who you are and, and like you as a person. So I think that that's big for agents. Wow. That's awesome. A couple of things that stuck out for me is that uh, an expert, which is uh, basically an authority, which you are, and you get your hands dirty, you get in, you get it done. And you're not like, oh, I'm above this. Like, I'm not right. going to do this. And my team's going to come in and just delegate everything. Like you delegate, of course, some things, but you get in, you get dirty. If I see the pain on your hands, you're wearing a dress, you're like, it comes up a conversation. Were you painting? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I yeah, love I was getting a house ready. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love that. I love that that about your character and kind of how you really lead by example, put yourself out there and do that. So, so kudos to you. That's huge. You. Um, so last question I have before we give it to Janae, Janae's going to kind of go over some technical, like what type of tools you're using to kind of run your business. Last question for me is like when you first got in four, four and a half years ago to now, what is like the one technology that you used that you kind of adapted to? And it might've been TikTok or Instagram or whatever video that actually was fruitful for any of our viewers and listeners out there. All right. So um, when I started and I started doing a lot of business, I started writing down like an operations manual. You know, I did that for the state parks. I wrote operation manual for our park. We did like a million dollars a year there. So I literally started writing down every single thing I did in a transaction, before a transaction, during a transaction, after a transaction. And I started um, building this little booklet. And so when I said that when it got too big for me, I'd hire somebody. So I'd take a piece of that manual and I'd be like, okay, this is your job. And so I I use a, a system called Paperless Pipeline and I have it set up to where it it literally, we put in a contract and it, it tells you the day things are due, like when's the bins are due, when's the bins are due back, um, when's the appraisal going to happen, like all these little checklists. So you never miss anything. And that way your clients can remain informed. So every little checklist has like send an update to the client because nobody likes to have their realtor, then they don't see them for a month, you know, so. Show how busy she really is. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that, you know, creating some sort of system for a transaction management, because you can only handle so many um, transactions at once if you don't have systems in place. So think about what you do and what works for you. And you could use, you know, your brokerage probably provide something like that or a transaction coordinator company or make your own or, or Excel spreadsheet, whatever you want to do, just make sure that you have everything that you need to do and everything title needs to do, everything lenders need to do, everything you need to do for your client, just have it written down so you don't miss anything. And that's the biggest thing that's helped me to not only do a huge volume, like this year, we're like 165 in the last 12 months with me and another agent um, and a transaction coordinator. It doesn't allow you just to do volume, but it allows you to do good volume where your clients are raving fans after the fact so that they're then going to say they hear somebody at the grocery store. I need a realtor. And they're like, hey, ma'am. Here's my, my agent's card. You have to use her. She's amazing. So the, the word of mouth is it, doing the transaction right is what gets you to the next level of referrals. Wow. That's, that's huge. For all the viewers and listeners out there, key performance indicators, standard operating procedures, focus on the income producing activities. You put together a book, you scaled yourself out of the business. Round of applause. That is, <laughs> I love that. So Thanks. many agents out there right now don't do that. And you're so proactive to just, write the stuff down and just get it done. And then you can just check it. And then it turns into a process and the process turns into an opportunity to rinse and repeat it. And then you just give off and hand it off and say, this is what we need to do. And then before you know it, it just becomes like second nature. It just goes, you know, you, you plug it in, plug and play. I mean, that, that's the best thing and to, to keep everybody happy is, is, is the benefit of that. And to not feel crazy. Like, where am I? What transaction am I doing? You just, you just know it's wow. all written out for you. Wow. 
You're very impressive. I'm going to go ahead and switch this off to Janae. Janae's going to take it on the mix-up round to go over a little bit more of the specific tools that you're using for the viewers and listeners and maybe some things that they can take to put it potentially use for their business. So go ahead, Janae, take it away. Yes. Yeah, no problem. So these are going to be pretty quick. Like you can just answer them like right off the bat, like boom, boom, boom. Um, so first one, I know you're talking about like referrals. So would you say that that's your top lead source currently? Absolutely. Yeah. I actually don't even do uh, internet leads for myself anymore. My team takes on uh, internet leads and we've just hired an ISA. So that all goes to the team. But for me, literally, like I get a text like, Hey, can you come to my house on Saturday? I want to list. And I'm like, sure. And, and that's just what happens like four or five times a week. It, it, I literally just get I, referral business all the time. I would say that's awesome. I mean, that's all of your hard work though, coming in now. So like super sweet. Do you happen to do any like cold calling, direct mail, anything like that? No, and I never have. Oh, okay. Okay. I say that's awesome. Being able to leverage everything that you're doing. So social media, I know that you were talking about that. How has that been for you? Is it kind of like a similar thing where you're just getting people like sending DMs or like comments like, Hey, want to chat with you? Want to work with you? Yeah. So, um, people ask me what I like to do. And I'm like, I like to make TikToks because they're, they're a lot of fun to do. But also like I started doing them and I started like one TikTok, I got a guy like a hundred thousand views. And I was like, what reach this has, this is crazy. Yeah. So I started watching like other professionals, like dentists, doctors, lawyers. I started like following them on TikTok and seeing what mm -hmm. they did. And it's so cool to like show your expertise through a funny little clip, right? It's like, okay, well, she knows what she's doing enough that she can make a joke about it. You know? So I think that just goes to show your professionalism, your personality, that you're, you're funny, you're going to be easy to work with stuff like that. So that the the Instagram and TikTok and you know I even do Facebook, kind you know I I anything I post on Instagram I post on Facebook but yeah, yeah. um yeah people people in my inbox people ask me questions like hey I'm in Georgia what do you think my house is worth and I'm like well I'm not an expert in Georgia but based on what I see online and then boom if that person ever has anybody moving to Tucson they're gonna send them over to me yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it takes me like ten minutes it's not even it's not even something hard to do mm -hmm. wow. Um, that's awesome. I love that. Just have a few more. These are more so about like some of the like tools you use, resources. So what CRM are you working with right now? Currently, I'm working with Follow Up Boss and um, it it's really good. Actually, I, I started off with Boomtown and it was just so involved. There, uh, don't get me wrong. A lot of people do go to Boomtown, but I could not get my team to use it. It has so many pieces and parts that I felt like it was too overwhelming. And so Follow Up Boss had what I needed. It had like... Um, round robin it has a uh, text right off of your phone it records the phone calls mm -hmm. so if you take a lead call on the fly you can literally just talk to them and get to your computer and play the message so you have four bedroom three bathroom these zip codes whatever so that that was a benefit for follow-up boss and mm -hmm. it also has like hot leads who you need to be talking to stuff like that so it's not like as bulky as like a boom town but oh. it's just enough for what um what me and my team need and actually use which was the biggest thing to get shout yeah. out we had dan car curl on the show we had follow-up boss on they're awesome <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good system i i really like it it's sweet no love that what tool do you use for time organization my calendar, my alarm. <laughs> uh, if it in my calendar, it's, uh, it doesn't exist. So uh, <laughs> I think that's pretty much what it is. And then my paperless pipeline, which which we have tasks. It, it so not only does it like tell you what day things are due, you go on there every morning, it tells you what tasks you have to do each day. So it kind of keeps you on top of everything. Okay, sweet. So I love that. Um, what is your number one technology tool right now? Mm, technology tool. Like, give me an example. Anything like uh, social media or if it's just like doing your website or if you're doing any type of like video. So, so my, my big thing is uh, top of my marketing. And so I say that social media is my biggest tool that I use for that. Um, make sure to post as much as I can. Some days I don't because I'm just so busy, but um, mm -hmm. I think the, the top of mind and, and keeping yourself up there and in your stories and, and posting on your page and not just that, but commenting back and then also commenting on other people. You can't expect to people to comment on you. If you never, ever go say, Hey, what's up cupcake maker. Those look delicious. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you have to give, to get you don't you can't just be like okay i'm posting and i'm gonna get a, you know 25 comments mm -hmm. you've got to go out there and actually like reach out to people that and, and comment on their stuff too that are doing it for you 
say agreed 100 percent. that's something that we love doing also i know stories that's like struggling with i'm still trying to stay consistent so i feel you sometimes you get busy time runs away but it's always good on those days when you can catch up the morning coffee is always a good story to start your day because you gotta you got a story all day on there (laughs) that's exactly what norma and i were saying we're like in the morning right after the meeting get the story done it's already out there for the day like crazy hair don't care have a good day so we'll we'll see we'll see what i what i have time for later but yeah yeah i love it love it awesome well that was all i had on my side thank you so much for answering all those all good tips for all of our viewers out there i'll pass it off to norman now awesome well thanks so much for taking on the mix up around janae and uh, thanks for giving us some of the tools and technology that you're using so we can give that to our viewers and listeners and maybe they can apply to their business so i have a couple last questions and then the floor will be open to you and you can go ahead and take it away here in a second and give our viewers and listeners anything that you want them to take away from today's episode um so positioning expert It sounds like you're pretty much an expert in your whole community. I mean, at this point, you've really just carved yourself out. You know, I'm sure your name floats around and everyone knows you. I mean, you go to the grocery store and people are just like, oh, hey, what's up, Candy? Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit intimidating. Sometimes my friends come to visit me and then we'll walk around and everybody's like, oh, Candy, Candy. They're like, do you know everybody? I'm like, yeah, kind of. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so definitely um, just... I I tend to stay around Salrita. I would say about 75% of my business is in my little town. So even if you're in a little town, there's still enough business for you to to do. Like if you're at the top in your town, you know, that's all you need. And and then the other stuff comes from like lenders and things like that, like Tucson and and referrals. But Mm -hmm. around here, um, yeah, I'm, I'm the agent. Somebody, somebody's like called another agent called me and she lost a, a multiple counter situation and she called me back and she's like, well, I know you're the queen of Salrita. And I'm like, oh my God, who, who started that? But <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> so it's really funny. Um, and she's like, just if you have anything coming up and you know, I, I make relationships with other realtors. Like if somebody has a question or if somebody is looking for a house, I make sure to actually put them on a list. So if I have something coming up, I shoot it out to them and they do the same thing back to me. So working together is not, is not difficult. We don't have to compete with each other in this business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. If you represent the seller, I mean, there's plenty of opportunities for the buy side. That's, that's yeah. really cool. I, I like that. Uh, you know, for you, it's just like, yeah, why not just, you know, just be in my area and just know everyone. And that's one thing I see a lot of agents that that do is they go and they drive in so many different areas and so many different cities, they kind of spread themselves really thin and with traffic and everything else. It's just like, why don't you just stay kind of local and then grow from there? Because if you have kids and a family, it's just like, you could just walk out your door and be like, yep, I sold that house, sold that house. There's John, there's Cindy, there's Stacy. Like, I mean, I would do it. I mean, you know, but two inches are them. So yeah. last question for me for open up the floor to you is, is there a secret weapon? Like say, for instance, if I wanted to, you know, list with you, like going to the formal listing presentation, I know majority of like 95% of your business is referrals. So you already got the deal closed because it's a referral. But mm-hmm. like, if it was someone that basically stumbled upon you and wanted to use you and you're going to basically market their home, like what's the secret weapon? What do you tell them in the formal listing presentation? Like, how do you approach that? Yeah. My secret weapon is, is knowing knowing everything. Like I went into a listing presentation and a lot of times I'll bring my agents with me so that they can learn. And this man had six pages in a notebook with questions and every question I'm like, boom, boom, this, that title, you know, all of the stuff. And we leave there and she's like, how did you know all that? I'm like, well, if I don't know something, I go call title company. I call my broker. I call the lender. I call whoever. I go to those little things that your broker puts on for free. Learn about VA loans. Learn about this. Learn about that. So literally, this is our career. It's not like a job. It's not like this little hobby that we have. If you were a lawyer and you did not study continuously throughout your career, you're never going to go anywhere. So if you want to be the expert, actually learn, like study. If you don't know something, figure it out, call somebody who does. And I think that because when I talk to somebody on the phone, like I I called uh, somebody called me today asking about a a house and they thought I was a listing agent. And I didn't know that till the end. And they're like, oh, you're with your, I'm not sure if I want to say brokerage is here, but you're with this brokerage. I'm like, oh no, I'm with this other brokerage. And they're like, oh, well, we usually like to work with a listing agent, but you sound really smart. So we want to stick with you. And I'm like, done. You know, like you, you just have to, to know your stuff. And I think that's quite honestly, not even a secret weapon, but if you want to call it a secret weapon, if you know your stuff and you are actually smart and you know the contract and, and you can say, oh no, in, in section six of the, you know, the contract, it says this, you know, that just, 
just the little drops of knowledge, people are like, wow, I trust her with the biggest purchase of my life or the biggest sale of my life. You know, I think that's really important. I mean, I'll be completely transparent with you before we go ahead and open up the floor to you. So my wife and I are looking to get some additional real estate and we want to invest because she wants to go full time with her, her tea career. She's an international tea master. Uh, shout out to the wifey. And so she's a teacher. She's been a teacher for 13 plus years. And just speaking to you on the podcast, I'm like, maybe you want to look into some real estate in your area and maybe you want to buy a house in your area to make our money stretch a little bit farther. This is like in the back of my head because I just feel the passion, the confidence, and I can see how someone could just talk to you and just automatically be like, all right. I want to work with Candy. So yeah, we're going to talk more after, after the show. So <laughs> I'm easy to find. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, Candy, well, we're going to open up the floor to you. What do you want the viewers and listeners to take from your episode now closing out? Okay. Um, viewers being other realtors and things like that. So I, I definitely say that, you know, at the beginning, if you're a new agent and you're just kind of getting, getting into it, get involved with your community because you work in your community and you want your community to thrive because otherwise if your community dies, then you're not going to have a job. So I get in there, I sponsor the community um, charities. I, I work with uh, building houses. I work with the elderly. I work with the veterans. I work with all those people and I'm not like, Hey, I'm a realtor. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. And then in regular conversation, what do you do? What do you do? Oh, you're a realtor. Okay, but you know, whatever. And then then they get to know you, not just because you're trying to get in because you're a realtor or trying to get work. You go in there with your heart. You know, you go in there with with genuineness. And I think that's the most important thing. Don't always just try to be closed deals. Like mm. Be, be a genuine person and people are going to work with you. Be a part of the community. As a realtor, you know, I'm, I'm a major investor for Raypack and I, I go sit on the boards and I make decisions because I want to make sure that, that the buyers and the sellers are going to, you know, their taxes, we're not, we're not, not fighting for the right things to keep, you know, home ownership easy to do and, and selling and things like that. So I'm really involved in all of that stuff. And that will give you knowledge because you'll be around people who've been in the business like 40 years. And those people have been through ups, downs, like all kind of stuff. And they, they have, even if they don't do as much business as, as somebody else, they have experience. So I would say for sure, get involved. And, and that was one of the biggest things at the beginning was getting involved, learning the lingo, learning the confidence, getting in front of agents. If you have a, if you're new or you're looking to get busy, be a showing assistant. You're going to learn so much. It, it was like a college education in real estate to go and be a showing assistant for a top producer. And, you know, I told her, I was like, this is, I would do this for free. You know, she was paying me a good hourly rate, but I was learning so much about the ability to grow. And then don't be scared of growth. Like if you're, if you're right there and you're like 30, 40 deals and you're like, okay, this is good. But if you have thoughts about growing, figure out a way to grow. Like I said, I, I knew from the beginning that it wasn't just going to be me. I, I was getting so much business within my first year that I knew that I needed help. So, you know, don't be scared to grow if that's what you want to do. Just just go out there and do it because if you don't, you'll be stuck. You know, you'll be making a good, good living, really good living. 30, 40 deals is a great living. But if you want to grow, help others. That's the other thing is I, I coach, I do these speaking things. I, I do, um, I'm the chair of the Young Professionals Network this year. And we do a lot of events to, to help teach other agents. And all of that stuff just grows your business where you're, you're posting online, hey, I'm at this event and stuff like that. So you're not like, oh, just listed, just sold. You're more like, this is my life. I'm a realtor and, and I know what I'm doing. So I think those things, get your designations, Go to the National Association of Realtors and you can do them right online. Get your designations because when I when you get an email from me, it says Candy Bowen, Associate Broker, Realty Executives, Candy Bowen Team, you know, SRS, CRS, SRES, ABR, MRP, you know, all of these different things. So when you have that alphabet soup underneath your name, people aren't going to question. You know, my first year, not one person asked me how long I was doing it because I have five designations within six months. And, and I just had all that stuff. So I think confidence, learning, if you're, if you're new, if you're younger and you don't have a lot of life experience, get a mentor, you know, go out there and, and do the things that's going to give you that experience to be able to relate to the most amount of people. My background, military, my dad was in the military as a Navy brat. I've lived 
coast to coast and up and down, you know? So somebody's like, Hey, I lived in Illinois. I'm like, man, I went to high school in, in uh, Highland park, right up the road, you know? So relatability is, is one of those things where if somebody wants to be your friend, they're going to want to work with you too. So mm -hmm. I think, I think all of those things would be, you know, get your transaction in order so that you're, you're providing a good service and don't put the, the cart before the horse. Like don't go out there and try to do 20 deals in a month and you don't even know how to do a transaction. Learn, learn first and then go out there and, and start doing the volume and stuff. That's, that's the biggest thing is be educated. Wow. That was amazing. I, I, I know for a fact our viewers and listeners could take things and like what we just went over and apply to their business. Candy, thanks so much for coming on a Real Estate Versus Tech. This is a pleasure to be able to hear everything about you and uh, actually learn, really learn about you and get all the meat and potatoes behind the scenes about who you are, how you got started and, and where you're at today. So, so thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm going to go put back on my painter clothes and go paint the house. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Janae, thank, thanks so much for co-hosting today. We appreciate it. Oh, of course. I know. It was so good. So glad I got to come on an episode with you, Candy. It was so fun. I love getting to talk with another boss woman. So I love it. Love to see it. <laughs> That's thank awesome. Thank you, guys. I had a lot of fun, too. Thank you. That's Awesome. And thanks to all our viewers and listeners, as it is our intention for you to apply something that you learned from today's episode to your business and have more massive success. And we will see you on the next one. It made it to the end. Well, thank you so much for watching Real Estate vs. Technology. We hope you found value, especially something you can apply to your real estate business. If you could do us a favor, we would appreciate it. A thumbs up. If you subscribe, hit the notification bell. You'll be notified for new episodes coming out. And comment below. What the heck did you learn? If you want to join our Facebook group page, there's a link right here. If you want to be featured on Real Estate First Technology, send us a DM on our Instagram page. We'll see if we get you on the show. So take care. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.